Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, guys and gals. We're here with the Kelp for Less crew. This is the Organic Mechanic, and we're going to answer some more of your questions. We had the crew here compile a bunch of nitrogen fertilizer questions that we get in, and nitrogen is a very common question and a very common misconception. So one of the main things that people ask us is, how do I know how much nitrogen is in this product? And chances are, it has the product you have has a fertilizer label on it. And the fertilizer label generally states in bold three numbers. The first number is nitrogen, and that's the one we're going to talk about today. So if you have a product that says 5-5-5 on the label, that means it's 5% nitrogen. We're looking at the first number. The second number, it's 5% phosphorus. And the third number, it's 5% potassium. So anyway, many of you know that, but for some of you that don't, that's where you can find how much nitrogen is in your product. So once we get to that point, how do we know how much of that nitrogen is readily available to plants and how much of that is slow release? Well, then again, it depends on the source of nitrogen that you're going to use. So we'll talk about that a little bit. A common story we get is, <clears throat> how much nitrogen should I use? And our response is, well, that's a tough question. Uh, what's the appropriate amount of hair someone should have on their head? You know, it's a rolling question. Some people have no hair. Some people have lots of hair. Same thing with plants. Some plants are very sensitive to nitrogen, and some plants are insensitive to nitrogen. Some plants get harmed by nitrogen, and some plants flourish with nitrogen. So we're just going to go over just real quickly uh, some circumstances that happen. So... We had a customer that call that uh, put a whole bunch of nitrogen on his turf, uh, on his yard. Oh, boy, and it greened up so good, and it was growing so fast, and he was so ha happy because he had this riding mower and the riding mower, like, like adjustable seats and, you know, a beer holder here, and he could drive with one hand and have the beer here and go like this and just throwing grass everywhere. And He wanted to mow once a day, so he was putting nitrogen on just – pounds and pounds and pounds of nitrogen to keep that grass growing. And that worked good for about a month or two. Then his turf stopped responding to the nitrogen. So what did he do? He put on more. So he put on double the amount of nitrogen to keep it growing and get it out there and just lawnmower and just throwing grass everywhere. And anyway, <clears throat> after a couple months, then his grass started to not do anything. It wouldn't respond at all. It was getting sick. It was full of diseases. Tests were coming in. It was terrible. And he couldn't figure out what his problem was. Well, he applied too much nitrogen, totally messed up the balance of the soil, and the plants pretty much said, or the grass pretty much said, yeah, we don't want any more of that. So he called in asking how to fix that. So what, what so <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is a lot of plants respond so good to nitrogen and it responds so good that we want to keep using more. And, and, you know, that's bad. That's not a good thing to do. We, we like a plant that's balanced, that's, that's fed a nice balance of nitrogen generally through its growing season. And it's kind of like, kind of like us, you know, we, we can't eat an entire meal. We can't eat enough in one night to last us a month. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to eat a little bit every day to make sure we make it through that month with the energy and run, our body's running right and all that good stuff. Plants are kind of the same thing. So the way, the best way to address, address that is we like to use two forms of nitrogen, a slow release form, and then maybe a readily available form. So to separate those two, readily available forms of nitrogen are generally salt-based or synthetic. Generally, they're that. And so they're good for fixing deficiencies quickly in, in a plant or overcoming uh, a problem you may have with some uh, uh, poor soils. You really want to, you know, get the, the plant, uh, you know, a lot of growth on it and get it shade, you know, developed around its roots so it can flourish down there. So a quick release nitrogen is good for that. A slow release, generally, you can mix that into the soil, till that into the soil, and it feeds the plant slowly. And, and there's drawbacks to that as well. Slow release nitrogens, we can't predict when it's going to be available to the plant. We like 
we like to think we can predict it, but there's so many factors involved. You know, the biological activity in the soil, the temperature of the soil, the moisture in the soil, a lot of those things work in conjunction to make nitrogen available. So we like to use a balance of quick release and slow release. We're big fans of organic nitrogen as well. So organic nitrogen is generally in the form of uh, uh, a crop residue, or there's a lot of animal manure type uh, nitrogens or a lot of animal byproduct nitrogens. Uh, we're, uh, boy, that, I don't even know where to start on the different forms, but we like alfalfa mill. We like alfalfa mill. We can apply it in the fall on top of our raised beds or in our gardens and till it in really good. Alfalfa is a great biological feeder and a slow release, you know, nit <coughs> excuse me, uh, nitrogen product you can add to your soil. Really easy. Another quote unquote slow release, but yet quicker release would be like fish meal. Fish meal is, has a really good uh, high nitrogen analysis and it, it tends to release its nitrogen quicker than let's say alfalfa. Even though it's still slow release, you'll get a quicker release from fish mill. And uh, and again, it's we try to look at things. It's a proper balance. And so, boy, I got way off track there. Let's just back up here <laughs> a little bit. So the next question is, how often do I apply nitrogen? And again, there's not a right answer for that. Uh, it depends on the plant, it depends on the soil condition, and it depends on how your garden's set up as well. So questions like that, specific plant questions, feel free to call us in and we'll help you out where we can because, you know, we could talk forever on every plant and then, you know, in two months we'd still be watching the same video trying to cover every form and every plant and we just don't have time to do that. But we just wanted to address some of the questions that, uh, you know, come into us and and uh, see if we can help you. We had a question the other day. I what's I need something that has the highest form of nitrogen that's available. And so I thought about this for a minute. And the, and the highest form, okay. Um, you know what? Air. <laughs> and we all had a big chuckle. Air said, yeah, air has more nitrogen in it than any other substance known to man. It's almost 80% nitrogen. Well, my plants can't use the air for nitrogen. Well, it's there. How do we make that possible? I think it goes back to soil biology and plant health and just having the whole system working. And if you get lucky, you'll have some lightning in the area and the lightning will help release the air out of the nitrogen, let that get into the plant. It'll actually change the nitrogen gas to NO3, which is going to be absorbed by the plant. But that's too risky. Let's just go ahead, plant ahead, put down some slow release nitrogen in your soil. And if your plant needs some later on in the growing season, give us a call and we'll recommend some good fast release sources for you. So once again, thanks for the questions. Um, it's, uh, we could go forever on this topic, but uh, we'll see what, uh, what we get and uh, we'll be back to address some other issues, okay? So until the next time, it's Organic Mechanic and the Kelp for Less crew. We're gonna take five.